Welcome to Seize the Mains by Raj Malhotra's IS Academy. I am Sirbi Sardana and I am taking this daily answer writing initiative from Monday to Friday at 9 pm. Here we teach you how to write good answers for UPSC Civil Services Mains. We discuss previous year questions of UPSC Mains and sample questions around that. Also, you can share your answers with us, send them to us at the given email ID to be evaluated by our expert team entirely free of cost. So, beginning with today, let's display what is the question for tomorrow's discussion. The, discu uh, the question for tomorrow is from GS paper 3, Infrastructure. Discuss the significance of National Infrastructure Pipeline, National Monetization Plan and Gati Shakti in augmenting the infrastructure development of India. Answer in 250 words for 15 marks. You can send your answers by 9 pm of 11th March. The discussion for this question will be held tomorrow at 10th, uh, on 10th of March at 9 pm. But you can share your answers within the next 48 hours either before the discussion or after the discussion. Try to write your own answers, try to complete it and send it before the actual discussion for this answer takes place. Send your answers at this email ID. This is also there in the description below. So starting with our today's uh, uh, lecture, it's day 22 of Seize the Mains. We follow a very uh, planned schedule which is attached in the description below. You can download the schedule for first 30 days of this 90 day initiative from the description. Today's question is from GS paper 2, India and its neighborhood relations. As we know, the Russia-Ukraine conflict is very much a news and a question around this, the, its implications on India is quite expected. So, we have taken a broad question where we are asked to discuss the implications of Russia-Ukraine conflict on India. And uh, this questions will cover all aspects, the economic, the security, all implications for India so that if UPSC does ask you a question or any um, uh, on any parts of this uh, of this uh, topic, you can be uh, you can be prepared by that time to easily handle that answer. So uh, the answers for this question will be taken till 10th of March, that is tomorrow 9 p.m. And starting with the um, answering this question. So first of all, let's see what could be the introduction for this. Since it is a discussed directive. You have to talk about all the parts of it like the positive implications and the negative implications uh, as well. So discuss the implications of Russia-Ukraine conflict on India. So you have to talk in specific regards to India. We will start by building an introduction. We will start by generally talking about what is given in the question. That is what your introduction is about. Since the word limit is just 150, we will keep our introductions and our explanations very short but we will have to include everything. So, uh, let me read this out. With the world interconnected, every geopolitical tension has a ripoff effect on India. This time around, the impact of the Russia-Ukraine conflict could be mixed. This first line that the world is interconnected and every action that is taking place at one corner of the world has, a, has its effects, uh, the butterfly effect that we call it, has its, has its effect on the other part of the world. So, this line has been very much a news since the COVID-19 pandemic. It is also in limelight here after the Russia Ukraine conflict. So, this is a very good beginning for your answers. You make sure that you use this line. The impacts can be broadly discussed under the following heads. So, the impacts on India they can be discussed under these heads and uh, as usual we will try to divide our answers into many parts so that it is readable for the examiner and the examiner understands that we know clearly we are being honest with uh, giving answer to this question. So, economic opportunity for agriculture, security implications, geopolitical significance, nuclear pro proliferation. We will start by discussing about economic impact and then we will move on to the other impacts. The first economic impact that we can see is uh, with regards to inflation. India imports 80% of its crude oil requirements and uh, on crude oil depends everything. Not only the uh, the prices of fuel at your petrol pumps rise when crude, when the price, uh, prices of these crude oil barrels rises, but all the commodities are dependent on the price of crude oil. Your airplanes, your trade, everything that functions on fuel, trade functions entirely on fuel. So, that uh, that is the price of trading increases when the prices of crude oil go up. In fact, many things are derived from derived as a byproduct of crude oil. So, those things also rise, see a rise in price. In fact, according to RBI with every 10 dollar rise in uh, crude oil prices, 
inflation sees a rise of 0.5 percent so let me read this out first point for you uh, about inflation india imports more than 80 percent of its crude oil requirements according to rbi every dollar 10 increase in crude oil prices adds about 0.5 percent to inflation given that crude and its byproducts form a critical component across industries from airlines to cement to pharmaceuticals the entire supply chain will see inflation apart from a rise in fuel prices for consumers directly the profit margins of oil marketing companies oil marketing companies had already seen a convergence in their uh, profits in fact the automobile industry was going through a slowdown since a very long time before even the covid-19 pandemic so what will uh, what will happen to these industries what will happen to these companies they'll again see a slowdown they cannot increase their prices beyond a certain point so that window of increasing the prices is gone it has been utilized uh, before in 2021 itself and they will see huge amount of losses the second point is about the value of rupee going down against dollar so since the value of rupee is weakening the resources that we had earlier are now decreasing the so the budgetary resources that the government was allocating to projects they are decreasing because the value of rupee is weakening so we'll have lesser resources available for the growth and development of our country so this is a huge these are huge implications for the country the third one is that Russia is the third largest exporter of crude oil and China is heavily dependent on Russia for its inventories. If China faces uh, disruption on supply and manufacturing uh, sides, so India could take a lead. India could, uh, you know, diversify the sources from where it obtains crude oil or uh, focus on renewables. And India could take a lead in terms of manufacturing, uh, in terms of cheap manufacturing and it could uh increase uh, indian companies could take a uh, could uh, take a leverage of this situation so indian companies could benefit as they are seen as the next best low cost manufacturing base after china same holds for iron steel and base metals so enhancing uh, trade and economic cooperation between india and russia is a key priority for the political leadership for both the countries we saw that in december 2021 there was india russia summit held and in that summit, it was decided that um, the trade relations will be carried out in rupee and ruble terms. There would be, there were many agreements that were signed. So, if USA puts a sanctions, uh, puts sanctions on Russia, that uh, you cannot trade with this, this, this country, or USA puts some sanctions on India, that to have good relations with the United States, we will, uh, we cannot have good uh, trade relations with Russia. So, what will India do? So, that's a point that needs to be looked in that our trade relations with Russia, direct trade relations with Russia will also suffer. So, enhancing trade and economic cooperation between India and Russia is a key, key priority for the political leadership of both the countries, as was clear after the Indo-Russia Indo summit of 2021. The sanctions could hinder India's plans to strengthen its ties with Russia. So, uh, our trade with Russia is very important. It stands at billions and billions of dollars and uh, billions and billions of dollars and many of our small businesses are directly dependent on their trade with Russia. So, that's a point that needs to be looked very much into. A separate question could be asked on the economic aspects of this development of this crisis in UPSC mains. So, the next point which has been talked very much about in newspaper columns is the opportunity that uh, comes in for Indian agriculture. As you must be reading that uh, Russia and Ukraine export a lot of wheat to the world. So, uh, since that uh, sanctions have been there on export of wheat or ships have been stalled at the Black Sea, no trade is happening, ships are stalled. India holds a potential benefit here to export wheat at higher prices. So, uh, there are news coming of like uh, wheats being exported from ports of Kandla and they are being exported at prices higher than MSP or their export comp uh, competitiveness of uh, wheat is increasing, of Indian wheat is rising. So, that's an opportunity for us. The Rus Russia-Ukraine conflict may give India an opportunity to ship more wheat in the global markets. So, the second point talks about vegetable oils, uh, sunflower oil or soya bean oil which Ukraine exports or Russia exports to the world. These exports are not taking place now and it is highly projected that these oils will see a rise in prices because the supply is low and the demand is the same. So, India has an opportunity to, to grab the market with its own vegetable oils. For example, uh, soya bean and uh, 
mustard oil that uh, that is grown in Rajasthan and UP. So these oils could see an increase in demand because they will be cheaply available. So the Ukraine crisis has also led to prices of vegetable oils and oil seeds skyrocketing that includes sunflower, soya bean and palm oil in Malaysia. Because of the trade imbalances, palm oil prices are also rising. The benefits of it should flow to mustard growers in Rajasthan and UP. So these were the two points for agriculture. The next point is about cotton because crude oil, uh, you know, byproducts of crude oil are used in making synthetic fibers. So the prices of synthetic fibers are also rising due to which the prices of cotton are becoming very competitive. The demand for cotton is increasing, which will directly benefit the Indian farmers. And not only this, due to all these agricultural commodities seeing a rise in demand, seeing a rise in price, the crop diversification which India has been aiming for so, for so many decades, crop diversification from this season could see a rise if we have a uh, like good amount of monsoon and support from the government side. So rising oil, oil prices are, are also helping lift the prices of cotton because of synthetic fibers becoming costlier and agri commodities that can be diverted for production of ethanol, sugar and corn or biodiesel. High prices above MSP and a good monsoon can act as an inducement for farmers to expand acreages under cotton, soya bean, groundnut, sesamum and sunflower in the upcoming Kharif planting season that will serve the cause of crop diversification. However, the uh, backdrop of this is that fertilizers, we, we import most of our fertilizers and agriculture industry is developed, agriculture sector is dependent on the prices of fertilizers. So the prices of fertilizers is ri rising because we depend highly on imports. So the overall impact on agriculture needs to be seen. We cannot just estimate that okay wheat is not available, we will supply wheat. We also need fertilizers at a very good rate. We cannot afford expensive fertilizers. So that's yet to be seen. However, the ongoing Black Sea tensions are impacting fertilizers prices as well. So the long term effects are still, uh, still to be seen. Russia and Belarus usually account for nearly a third of India's total potash imports, which is a key ingredient of fertilizer. So one third of potash imports are there from Russia and Belarus. So uh, moving on to our next part, we've done the economic impact and the opportunity for agriculture. The third and most talked about uh, in this is because this is an IR question is the security implications that would be there for India. So the first security implication is about the defense weapon systems. We import around 60% of our defense systems from Russia. So since a lot of economic sanctions are being imposed on, uh, on Russia, the western nations are trying to economically isolate Russia to make it weak uh, as weak as possible. China is coming to its rescue. China has said that we will not put any restrictions on you. China is importing things from Russia and supporting it as a friend. So whenever in future there is a there is a lash out between India and China like the border issues that we have from time to time. First of all, first question that comes to our mind is that will Russia come to our rescue? Will Russia support us? Second question that comes to our mind is that since our weapons, our weapons, our fighter jets have been imported from Russia, they are based on Russian technology. Will Russia play the role of an honest broker or it will give out our secrets, our uh, uh, secrets of all the defense te technologies that we have uh, away to China. Uh, will it leak out the secrets to China? So these are the two questions. Third question is about the future technologies that can be imported from Russia. USA uh, uh, under the Katsa Act has been very strict uh, regarding Iran, Russia and North Korea in the past as well. We had already secured the S-400 missile deal so that is protected as it looks from here but about the future deals that were to take place for the uh, for which the money was yet to be exchanged will those deals still be possible and if they are not possible what options does india have where do we get our defense weapon systems from where we, where do we get these missiles from and russia is also helping building the nuclear power plant in kundamkulam so will that uh, the there would be a slowdown in its development that these are all the scenes that have to be seen uh, for the security implications 
So, uh, reading this out for you. Due to the efforts of the West to economically isolate Russia, Russia's dependence on China will increase. This is clear from China's recent decisions to lift restrictions on wheat imports and enter long-term energy contracts with Russia. Russia might not be able to play the role of an honest broker if and when another military skirmish or even a limited conflict takes place on the India-China border. So, currently over 60% of Indian military inventory is of Russian origin. There would be negligible possibility of getting a waiver from the US under the Cuts Act after this conflict. For purchasing key defense technologies from Russia in future, India has signed the S-400 air defense systems and AK-203 assault rifles defense deals with Russia. India is also looking to receive the third Akula class nuclear attack summary sometime in 2025. You can talk about the Kundam Kulam nuclear power project here. The another security threat is from cyber attacks because India did not uh, uh, put a vote against Russia in the United Nations Security Council. So, uh, the hackers of Ukraine are very belligerent in a very belligerent state towards India. Also, since at this time, most of the attention of international community and of most, the gov most of the governments is there at this Russia-Ukraine conflict. So, our cyber security systems are under threat and these uh, uh, because the attention has been diverted from this place to Russia Ukraine access. So, since the cyber security systems are under threat, cyber security is something that even with very low amount of invest investment, lot of collateral damage can be done. So, that is another threat that has emerged, it is a new form of threat which has emerged in the last few decades. So, this has to be looked at and cyber security has to be talked about in your security and IR answers in uh, most of the questions. So, make it a point to include this uh, this part. The risk of cyber attacks has increased. A lot of the hacking community in Ukraine is not happy with India choosing to abstain from voting at the United Nations against Russia. Moreover, there could also be a spillover impact where other countries may take advantage of this distraction to test their latest malware into the vulnerabilities of servers based in India. According to experts, India needs to up, it, up its ante against potential cyber security attacks in the telecom, infrastructure and banking sectors because very high collateral damage is possible even with very low investments. So, this was about the security implications. Moving on to the next part which is the geopolitical significance or the geopolitical implications of this conflict. The first thing is that USA might not want India to have good relations with Russia. So, we will have to recalibrate, we might have to re recalibrate our diplomatic policies. Some diplomatic calls might have to be taken by India or some stand has to be taken by India in this. Uh, what kind of stand we do not know right now, but we will have to observe and see what can be done. The second point is that due to this conflict, this Ukraine, Russia region and the Black Sea region. This was not very much in focus earlier, but now it has come in focus of the entire, inter, entire international community. Many European nations are under threat. In fact, the international security law is under threat because if Russia succeeds in uh, the seas of Ukraine, so this would be a very huge loss, very huge damage to the security law that we have in place, the international security law and it would be a big defeat of the laws, of the international laws that we have in place. It could also motivate other countries like China to attack Taiwan and also since the focus of these countries, this, these developed countries is now on this area, on the Russia-Ukraine area, the Indo-Pacific region might lose significance or might lose the kind of resources it has been supplied by for its security by these developed countries. So, if the resources are not there, if the European nations or the Western nations are engaged in themselves, uh, in protecting their interests and protecting themselves, which can be seen during this conflict and will be seen for further in future. So, India will lose on the security side in the Indo-Pacific Indo where China has already been crossing boundaries been uh, breaking international laws for the past decade or even before that. So, that would be a huge loss and that is a very 
grim situation that would be a very grim situation for india and that needs to be seen and handled in time so the geopolitical significance uh, let me read this out for you the indo us uh, the india us dynamic is central to india's strategy to counter china managing indo pacific and creating supply chain alternatives it's quite possible that the us will want india to recalibrate its position on russia in return for its cooperation thus india might have to make some difficult diplomatic calls here just uh, in one or two lines talk about the relevance of non alignment movement a uh, lot of articles have been coming out on india and the non alignment movement was it right and does it uh, does it stay relevant in today's time also can india take such a stand that it took in those times of cold war in the times of non alignment movement so uh, read through this and make sure that you have your answer prepared around this topic also if it is ever asked so during conflict there is a possibility that china achieves the reunification of taiwan due to the occupancy of the us in ukraine in this scenario china will be able to assert assert its influence in indo pacific and quad may lose its relevance as a countervailing grouping this scenario will create great regional difficulty for india also since most of the european countries are now becoming europe centric in contrast to before the crisis so this would be a grim situation for india that if these countries are not willing for partnerships with india or are not willing to delegate their resources to india how will india function so moving on to the last part that is nuclear proliferation this has come recently it in the uh, articles of the hindu and the indian express so what uh, what is seen is don't read this right now i'll read this out for you what happens is whenever such a crisis or such a news and current affairs comes in most of the notes that you will find on websites cover almost the same points but when you are preparing for upsc as an aspirant yourself make sure that whatever newspaper articles are coming you you at least write one to two lines whatever the writer is trying to say you don't have to note down or cut the entire article just note the central idea because it will form one part of your question one point in your question and when examiner sees points like these which are different from other people's answers or some coaching notes you will definitely get more marks so uh, this was a recent article that nuclear proliferation of countries might increase because you will ukraine had given up on its nuclear arsenal on the guarantee by united states that we'll protect you but since it was a non nuclear power russia attacked it and same is the case with taiwan that uh, taiwan also faces this uh, challenge of being attacked by china so many more countries especially in the asian region might want to acquire or might increase their nuclear arsenal so our efforts at the international level to decrease the amount of nuclear weapons might be at stake so the overall global security situation of the world is at stake right now if this nuclear proliferation takes place so the conflict has made it apparent that a country without nuclear weapons is more likely under the threat of being attacked this realization might transform the nuclear landscape of asia many countries would start up boosting their nuclear arsenal for security purposes this would also cause serious security implications for the entire world and the efforts to curb the proliferation of nuclear weapons could be at stake so these were the five broad points broad headings under which we discuss this answer discuss the implications on india there could be positive sides for example the import of sunflower oil it could be a positive thing for the agriculture it could be negative thing take a stand and write down as many points as you can it's always good if you can divide the points into subsections because that ways you are able to add more content since this is a 150 words answer you will not be able to write these kind of full points there so make sure that you just take the keywords use schematics like these write the subheading here for example subheading 3 security implications and then add sub points in form of keywords make this tree kind of diagram and that's how you need to write your answers finish within 150 words moving on to the conclusion see indian diaspora has been suffering a lot most of medical students are stuck there so first thing is that whenever such crisis takes place why do we see that uh, like uh, so many people are stuck here and there first of all the indian education system the employment system needs to be developed and this crisis in a, is an opportunity to relook at these things that people on their own on their individual level are sending their children to these places which are highly risky they have been under risk for many years many decades so that's one thing we need to 
revamp our education and employment systems secondly we need to have a planned evacuation policy so that whenever such a crisis happens we have a policy in place we know what to do what uh, what kind of people to rescue first what kind of people to rescue on the second number and what steps have to be taken on an immediate level what teams have to function so uh, an evacuation policy is required also our dependence on crude oil is very much high this is the weakest point that india has that we don't have our own crude oil reserves so either a uh, strategic oil reserves have to be increased in number and in their capacity secondly we have to increase our focus on renewables we have to move to from this uh, dependence on crude oil to dependence on electricity we can revamp we can upscale the international solar alliance we can develop more bilateral partnerships especially with european countries which might see an inward shift inward looking towards their international policies so these are the points these are the points that you can broadly talk about just say that every crisis uh, presents us with an opportunity to rebuild old systems so uh, reading uh, reading this out for you india should look for alternatives in place of russia and reduce its high degree of dependence in sectors like defense and energy for instance in the case of cooking coal coking coal focus should be on australia brazil and other central asian countries also the focus should be more on renewable sector now isa should be scaled up also india will now have to function a great deal on the bilateral ties especially with the Euro european nations to promote the, its interest as more and more nations will take a self oriented approach also in the case of afghanistan we see that uh, we could see that we did not have much say in the case of us and taliban and whatever was the situation in afghanistan india was not at the forefront so this is an opportunity th which has erupted after a very long period of time where india can take a stand where india can take a lead because the quad meeting was held recently most of the countries are looking at how india has developed its its indigenous capabilities to rescue its own people out of such crisis zone so that is one thing india is being seen as a leader or as an important stakeholder in the situation we are the second largest market of the world we are the fourth largest economy so we must leverage our position to have a say in such international conflicts in such situations so we are not left behind so we not only need to focus on our higher education systems and the employment opportunities but we also need to have a full proof evacuation policy in place for such circumstances to protect indian diaspora apart from the issues involved this crisis is an opportunity for india to become relevant again we need to be more proactive to ensure a strong hold in the larger geopolitical game so that sums up your answer this uh, this answer make sure that you compress all the information in 150 words use schematics use tree diagrams don't write full sentences and just make sure that you give all the information you can to the examiner because that's how you'll get more marks so and don't add any irrelevant information you can send your answers to us uh, within the, the next 24 hours at this email id this is also there in the description make sure that your answers are in pdf format and they're not a uh, copy of this answer this uh, this issue has been recently in news and every day we are seeing a lot of editorials and many other articles in magazines on this issue so make sure that you add some points of information from your side send your answers to us as soon as possible have faith in your answers and keep working hard you can download the pdf of this presentation from the description below thank you and see you with another discussion tomorrow